So, hey guys, been a long time. Um, SPS Debo getting back in the YouTube game and at least updating my guides and stuff like that. So, I decided to start updating about uh, all the different changes in 2.1. I'll be doing. Um, Actually, going back to the forum post I have where I have my Witch Doctor Compidium, which has all my Witch Doctor information, and I'll be going back and editing and adding stuff about the new gyms and 2.1, the new tactics and stuff like that. But I just wanted to make about, uh, this video might run about 30, 40 minutes long. Uh, it shouldn't be too long. Uh, me going to be running from Greater Rift level 32. Actually, it may not take too long. Up until uh, level 35, that's where my max out is. If I get lucky, I might be able to do 36, but uh, I'm just going to talk about uh, the most major build that Witch Doctors are using right now, which is the Jade build. So let's go ahead and get off into it. They have changed the Quizzicodal Mass in 2.1. It no longer guarantees has attack speed on it. Um, what you really want inside the Jade build, at least with the Quizzicodal Helmet, is you want Ant, you want Vitality. You also want Critical Chance. You also want a socket. If there is no chance to have critical percent chance and a socket, then you always want to get the socket because you need that for the cooldown reduction. The 12.5 cooldown reduction is very important. Let's go ahead and get it started on the Jade Shoulders. Your Jade Shoulders want to have Int, Vitality, Armor, and actually increased Haunt damage or cooldown reduction. I chose to go for cooldown reduction here. In the long term, you do want the uh, shoulders to have int, vent, cooldown reduction, and haunt damage. I'm still on the lookout for that. Uh, you want your gloves to have something like this, int, critical percent, chance, critical damage, and also cooldown reduction. Uh, of course, in the future, hopefully, I can get one that has higher stats. Hopefully, 45% critical damage or higher. Something with 9 crit or higher. Um, and then, of course, 700 int. And then, of course, max cooldown reduction. On your chest is pretty much straightforward. Int vitality, increase haunt damage. And then now, and also in 2.1, when you find any Jade Harvester chest pieces or uh, the pants, they automatically come with triple sockets. So it makes it a lot easier to get your nice little setup with the haunt damage here. Of course, we're going to run the strong arm bracers because you're using Piranos or Perinato. Uh, increase cold damage, int vitality. Pretty solid. Uh, now also with the Traveler's Pledge, now this is a pretty good combination if you have the ring when you're first starting off, but really any necklace with int, critical percent chance, critical damage in a socket will do. Uh, optimally you want to get one that has critical percent chance, critical damage, uh, socket and elemental damage which is cold. Now in the best, best, best in slot scenario, you want a Hellfire Amulet which now they have increased the drops to 100% on T6 when you kill the uh, Uber boss. The organs drop guaranteed. And what happened is, is uh, when you craft the amulet, it has one regular passive granting you a fifth passive. So what you would want on that necklace optimally is critical damage, uh, critical percent chance, uh, cold damage, and socket. That's the best you can get. And then, of course, gruesome feast. But realistically, uh, even if you don't get Gruesome Feast, as long as you get one of these four major skills on the necklace, which is Pierce of Elgraven, Justice Spirit, Vessel, Creeping Death, which will allow you to run Gruesome Feast, that is pretty much the best in slot for the necklace. So that's what I'm working on currently. I got a Stone of Jordan. Um, I got to go switch that out. Uh, Stone of Jordan from, uh, is pretty nice. It's pretty much best in slot in group. You can run without the Stone of Jordan, but... It's really hard once you get to certain levels because you just take so much damage. So what I'm actually going to do is swap out the Stone of Jordan for the Unity Ring. And straightforward, good int, critical chance, elite damage, socket, and then you know you split the damage between the wearers of it. As you can see, my Enchantress, she has one. And then she also has the relic that makes it so my follower cannot die. So I get 50% damage reduction. One new belt that you should be looking into, if you don't have the Blackthorn's Necklace and Blackthorn Belt, I advise to get either the Hajra Wrap, which slows everything when you Locust Swarm it, or actually what you can do is you can get the Vigilante Belt. Now, mm, at first I was a little apprehensive, but this belt is pretty solid. I'm going to keep looking for better versions of it. I got an 8% cooldown reduction, which is the max roll, and Vitality and Life Percent, pretty awesome. Um... 
then this allows you to basically get in a little bit of extra cooldown reduction. So maybe on the shoulders, if you don't like cooldown reduction, I have been thinking about, you know, re-rolling this from cooldown reduction into uh, haunt and damage. So that's something that you possibly could do. But, I mean, that's, again, that's up to you. Uh, but this is pretty much how I consider best in slot for Jade build on the belt because cooldown reduction is very good. Uh, Witching Hour is also good. There's a lot of good build alternatives, but give Vigilante build a try. The cooldown reduction is incredible, and more cooldown reduction means you can harvest quicker. The faster you can harvest, the more damage you do. Of course, we got the classic Ring of Royal Grandeur. Int, crit percent, chance, attack speed, and socket. The way they fixed it now, that is, you're always going to end up having attack speed on it. You can't get it to the way you wanted, how it used to be. You can't get it with int, critical percent, chance, critical damage, and socket unless you have it already. But in seasons, you just that's what they did to it. I guess that makes sense to me because they didn't want to make it too powerful and they wanted to give us, makes us have, have choices in between what we could use and what we can't use. Or long story short. You're going to have to use this because that time teams up allows you to use a quizzical to mass. So we all pretty much know that. Pretty straightforward. And the Jade Harvester Courage and the shoes. Um, the only thing you can really look out for these is getting them with 490 int and 490 vitality. So I'm looking for the ones that have 490 int, 490 vitality. Uh, and then I can have armor on it. That'd be fantastic. The boots I'm actually pretty much done with. I'm pretty happy about these. 489, basically 490. 498 vitality, good armor, movement speed. And uh, the in-game weapon, which is the furnace. Now, if you don't have a furnace, what you actually can do... Uh-oh, one second. Let me make sure I'm online. Yeah, I'm streaming. I'm good. Uh, one thing you can do is use a Sunkeeper, well-rolled. And then for your offhand, you can use a Ukpakin Serpent or Thing of the Deep. Um, as an example, I got a real nice Sunkeeper here. The elite damage is kind of low, but it's still a solid weapon. And then I have options. I can use a Ukpakin Serpent. This one has increased damage to elites, and I could probably change the Spirit Barrage. You're probably going to want to change that to cooldown reduction. Or you can use a nice Thing of the Deep because this has good pickup radius extension, reduces cooldown skills by, you know, 6%. And then also increase haunt damage. Those are always pretty nice as well, too. So if you don't have the furnace, you could still get really high. 35 plus, I've seen it, with uh, Sunkeeper and a Ukapun or a Thing of the Deep. Um, pretty much in terms of the skill, pretty pretty much what they always used to be or still are. Haunt, Resentful Spirits, Locust Swarm with Pestilence, Jaunt with Spirit Walk, Siphon with Harvest, Horrify, Frightening Aspect, and Piranhas of Paranado. The skills are Pierce the Veil. Uh, Grave Injustice, Spirit Vessel, Creeping Death. Standard Jade Shed skills. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I'm missing. Uh, critical Chance is at 49, Critical Damage is at 32%, Cooldown Reduction is at 44%, Cold Damage is at 20%, Haunt Damage is at 13 Hopefully I can improve that in the future. Paragon Levels, uh, just enough points and movement speed. I have 10% now, so I want 15%. 15 plus the 10 is 25, which is the max. That's just enough to get the max. Rest to intelligence. And uh, critical uh, cooldown reduction is priority, followed by critical chance. Uh, armor into life percent, or you can do life percent and resist all. You do want the life percent, though, because that makes a big difference. Utility, uh, resource cost reduction followed by life on hit or area damage, but the main one is having resource cost reduction. And that's pretty much about it. Uh, oh, of course, some legendary gems. Bane of the Powerful, uh, get 20% increased damage for 66 seconds after killing the elite pack because I got it at rank 36. Increases damage against elites by 15%. Bane of the Trap, increases damage against use under the control pairing effects uh, 26%. Gain of the aura that reduces movement speed of it means 15 yards by 30%, which is okay. And then, of course, inside the Nexus, we have the Gem of the Infectious Tox Toxin. Poison all enemies for a hit for 4,000 weapon damage over 10 seconds. That's at rank 40. All enemies you poison take 10% increased damage from all sources, which is going to combo in with our Jade Set build. Okay, so everything's looking pretty solid here. We're going to go ahead and I want to make sure the stream chat is up. Give me one quick second, wonderful people on YouTube. Just trying to make sure my chat comes through on Twitch TV. And I do believe it's going to load up no problem. So, okay. We're not going to have any music because we all know what YouTube does in music. We're just going to go ahead and enable sound and in game effects volume. Cool. 
increase that master volume up a little higher. And we're going to start at level 32. Let's see how it is. I wish you luck, hero. There we go. Now at my level, actually we're going to reduce that sound just a little bit. Okay. So at my level, and with the gear that I have, um, I don't need to really combo everything. All I need is really to kill most trash mobs. It's just haunt and uh, harvest and stuff like that. Movement speed isn't that great, but I mean, that's okay. Most trash mobs that have low HP just require um, a little bit of a haunt and then a harvest like there. Elite, Piranhas of Perinato, Fall by Locust Swarm, Haunt all the targets, Walk in, Harvest, Horrify, Recast Piranhas of Perinato. Just gotta be a little bit careful. Go in, Harvest again. Uh oh, we might die. Nope, nope, we died. A little bit off my game of Frozen to Lose, Jailer Teleporter. Let's head back in. But usually what you want to start off with is the Piranhas of Perinato, followed by Locust Swarm, followed by Haunts, followed by Harvest after that. Let's try this one more time. There we go. Let's see if I can... No, nope, looks like I'm not going to get anybody else. And let's just harvest them. There we go. Oh, okay, we killed them all. That'll work. So it looks like I'm a little bit behind now. And uh, see how far I can get ahead here. See if I can catch. Well, I'm not. It's not if I can catch up. I know I'll catch up. Uh, the main thing when playing the Jade build is just. I mean, you could play risky with it, but I really find just playing safe and having like a standard of play really ends up just making for better runs consistency I always try to strive for when I'm talking to people about playing the Jade build. You can play a little bit more aggressive with the pet build but uh, the thing reason why pet build can do that it's just the simple fact that uh, the pets take a lot of damage for you. So when the pets are taking a lot of damage for you you don't have to worry too much about you know um, actually having to you know face that damage all by yourself. Alright, so I'm using Piranhas and Perinato in combination of Horrifying Spirit Walks to keep myself out of trouble. There we go. I usually like to Horrify after I Harvest, if that makes any sense. Uh, just so I can lock them down for a little bit so it gives my uh, cooldown of my Spirit, my Soul Harvest to come off as cooldown so I can re-harvest again. Now sometimes you might be in awkward positions where um, you start off and you're like a little bit behind or you die, just don't freak out because Jade Build has a pretty good ability to catch up. I got my other elite here. And I got my harvest going. Now I'm going to go ahead and horrify. Wait for my Piranhas Perinato. Recast it. Locust Swarm. I cast Haunt a little bit or uh, horrify a little early. Harvest. And he is pretty much dead. He's going to fall over in a second. And I pick up his orbs. Work. There we go. And again, uh, most smaller trash mobs just need a harvest at this level, <clears throat> based upon my gear. Mob density is really not that great on this level, but I mean that's just something you can't control. The only way to get a better run is just to make more runs or do more runs just in general because the more runs you do, the more chances you get of getting a favorable run that will help you get a better ranking time. Needs more time. And this is pretty bad for mob density, but I mean, hopefully Blizzard deals with this in the future, but like I said, you can't control it, so it's no reason to get mad. If you get mob, bad mob density, then, I mean, you just pretty much just take it in stride, and not much you can do with that. There's another elite, Piranhas of Perinato. I'll go ahead and Locust Swarm, I'll even cast Horrify to CC them, recast the Piranhas of Perinato to CC them again, then I'll come in, Harvest. Most of them got damage. 
And I'm just gonna need just a haunt. Don't really need a, another pestilence. And a harvest. And the last one should be going down momentarily. He drops his globes. I pick him up. So that's pretty much about it. Now when the higher the level goes, I'll start incorporating with more Paranados than just simply coming up and haunt, but at level 32, it's at least for when you start getting the gear ups and stuff, you really don't need um, a lot to get these monsters down, at least in terms of trash monsters, but definitely for every single elite, you do want the Piranhas and Paranado, fall by the Locust Swarm, fall by the Haunt, maximize that damage and take them out in one to two blows is what you're ultimately shooting for. If you can get them in one, great. If you get them in two, great. Three is semi okay, depending on what floor four or five is kind of inefficient. I mean, you should only be getting to the point where you need four or five harvests if you're like on greater rift level 40. And now we're down to the next level. Looks like the same build as the last level, so hopefully we can get some nice mobs. Make that bar catch up. I'm usually pretty consistent with clearing 32. But we will see, because I have no idea how much the rift is going to give me in terms of mobs. Like right now, it's pretty bad for mob density, as you saw, I don't really just have any mobs. But there's really not much I can do versus that. If there's no mobs, there's just no mobs. And the only thing you can do is just reset and hopefully get a better greater rift. through the next door. Falling behind really badly, but I'm thinking they'll give me a bone soon. They'll give me some decent mob density, I'm hoping. And just no mobs, unfortunately. But we're getting a couple here and there, which is okay. Let me see here. I have engaged an elite monster. Just where is that elite monster? There they are. Piranhas Paranato. Haunt. Come in, harvest. Horrify. Recast the haunt. Come back in, harvest again. Reason we have the able to harvest like that is because of cooldown reduction. Gonna go ahead and check out this in this hallway. Hopefully there's some mobs or something. Hope hoping for an elite or two. But uh it's not looking too so great in terms of the mobs. Go below to the next level. Couple of spiders. Looks like we got another elite coming up. So I'm gonna finish off these spiders. Alright, lead off with the Piranhas Paranata. Locust Swarm. Haunt. All the targets. Harvest. Horrify. Redo the Paranata. Lock them back down. Come back in, harvest again. He's almost dead. Are we harvest? Or we? I'm sorry, horrify. And he might even die due to the dot before I have to harvest, but I'll harvest him anyway. Okay, locust swarm hunt, and on to the next level. So that was kind of okay. It got me an elite kill, but like I said. Hopefully the next floor actually has some decent mob density. Um, what really determines what you're going to get to the next floor is whether or not you have the will and the know-how and the gear. But like I'd have to say 80% of the rift determines how well you're going to do because it's just pretty RNG. So, Locust Horn, Haunt, Horrify, Re-Spirit Walk, Re-Paranado, Re-Haunt. Horrify is up, I gotta be careful. Spirit Walk, Harvest, Locust Swarm. Recast the Paranado, cast the Horrify early, look for the Elite, there he is, Harvest, it's dead. So as long as you get really good at your cooldowns and your timings and you get a good cooldown reduction, uh, it will definitely make your life a lot easier. Okay, he should be dying soon, he just died, good. And that triggered my band trapped. So that was okay on mobs, hopefully I get a couple more mobs, because I'm running behind the clock right now and it's just not looking too great. Another elite, that's pretty good. Locust swarmed already. Pernado. Haunt, come in. Harvest, horrify. Recast your abilities. Horrify. And three more. Orbs. So we're starting to catch up. Hopefully, it just stays that way. Okay, these guys really don't need a Piranhas or Paranado. Just need a haunt. 
and a harvest. Missed that guy right there. I might Paranato right there just to um, put them all in one nice little group. And then I'll come in, harvest. And I'll cast a Locust Swarm with these guys too. And Horrify. Or I'm sorry, not Horrify, but uh, Haunt. Get the one shot. So this is the kind of mobs you actually want to see when you're running your Greater Rifts. But like I said, you see how we're catching back up right now? It's sometimes the riff is just going to start off that way, which sucks, but just remember that as long as you just play very safe, don't make any too many rash decisions, like just basically play, I don't know, I guess I call it like grandpa style or granny style jade build, and it seems kind of boring at some times, but like if you just really just play safe, you actually end up pulling ahead because it's not really about rushing through. Like I said, the density of the mob, or say the density of the rift and the mobs of the rift determine how well you're going to do inside of a rift. Sometimes you might be able to clear 35, and you know, maybe on the way to 35, you're usually able to skip a couple levels. You might have a run where you start at level 30 and you have to play 30, 31, 32, 3, 4, up to 35, and you max that at 35 because you get bad mobs. Um, what you're just trying to do is just get to the point where your build can deal with the lower levels or the higher levels or at least until you get to your max out level and your max out level is like the last level you get before you can just you can't clear anymore my max out level is 35 um, I feel like I can do 36 well actually I'll say I can pretty much do consistently 35 but 36 is a little bit of a stretch for me so basically I can always pretty much do 35 if I play safe. 36, will I can do maybe half the time or maybe once in a blue moon. But in order to make 36 my next consistent level, I have to look for more upgrades, look for better rolls on my gear, get maybe a couple more Paragon levels, maybe get a Hellfire Amulet so I can run, you know, Gruesome Feast. And then, you know, 36 will be my next max out level, while maybe 37 might be my next level where I'm just going to have to push through and figure things out. So, you know, just the biggest thing is, is just until you get perfect rolls in all your gear, just try to make and produce consistent runs that will allow you to rank up within the ladder. And then once you start getting towards the in-game items and you got most of those, the only thing that's really going to come down to in terms of having a good rift is just if you get lucky inside the greater rift. You know, um, this game's all based on RNG, and this is no different. So you always just got to remember that, you know, even like with this rift, it's really bad right now in terms of mob density. You're going to get mobs like that. You're going to get rifts like that. And there's really just nothing you could do about it. But just accept it and just try to run it to the best of your ability and play it to the best of your ability because what else can you really do? can't really do anything else because you can't control the mob density and you can't control what mobs they give you so it's just another random aspect of Diablo so I know maybe some players out there don't like RNG and I know some players out there that just just get kind of frustrated sometimes it's like in greater rifts it's the same exact thing um, just is RNG everywhere and there's really not much you can do other than just trying to produce consistent runs and, uh, I mean, that's about it. Like, right here, I just died. Nothing I can do. I got some Vortex, Vampiric, Teleporter, Frozen, um, ass Winged Assassins. I hope I can finish this on time. I hope I can get the Rift boss down, but it doesn't look like I'm going to do it because I just got, like, a really bad Rift. Now, I consistently do 35, but sometimes you're just going to get some bad mobs and get some bad Rifts where there's pretty much not much you can do. Like, see right there with the winged assassin, I don't know where that winged assassin went. There's the where he is right now. And then maybe this will trigger the rift guardian. I don't think I'll get this rift guardian down in time, but we'll have to see. I got 56 seconds. I don't think I'll get it, but I'll try. And if I don't get this, I'll just chalk it up to a bad rift, I guess. I might be able to get him. We'll see. I got 34 seconds. I can get about three more harvests in, so we'll have to see. I don't think I'm going to get it. 
not enough time. If I had a couple more seconds quicker, we could have got to the next level, I think. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to get it. Nope. One second too late. And sometimes you just get a bad riff like that. Not much you can do about it. Hopefully he drops something pretty good. Bracers, not really. And a bell, unless it's another Vigilante. No, I'm going to have no use for it. So that was a little bit of a bust. So we'll just go ahead and upgrade whatever gem I am upgrading right now. I think I'm doing Pain Enhancer. And we'll go ahead and say this is just part one of the J build. We just did 32 a couple of seconds too late. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and split this up into two videos. And then the next video, hopefully I can, uh, we can get to 35 so I can show you guys where I cap off at. So I'll go ahead and stop the video right here.